if you want to say what could be the solution for this, we cannot have a one fit all solution. It, it differs from one location to the other location. So based on the, because the climate change, one thing we should realize is, is global. But the adaptation has to come from micro level. The sea level rise, uh, when you call the second parameter is the sea level rise, which we say that by the end of the century, it may be about 0 0.5 to one meter rise by the end of the century in, in India. One meter is quite huge, which will involve large scale damage to properties. So, it is, but it is different between one area to the other area. What we find in the south coast may be different from northern coast. For example, in Sundarbans, it is projected to be more rise in sea level. In the south, it may be relatively less. So you need to have separate measure for each of these locations. In Sundarbans, you can use the mangroves as the shelter. You cannot use the sea wall there. Southern part, you can use sea wall. In many people may not grow. You cannot have one fit all solution for everywhere. So you need to have a micro level planning for adaptation. You need to have a better weather warning system. The events of uh, intense rainfall is going to happen. For example, in one hour, there is going to be 20 centimeter of rainfall. And next year, full year, you are not going to have any rain. So how we are going to manage the situation? Reservoirs, cleaning of some of the... So, so I think we need to have a micro level planning and we need to have better weather warning systems and also disaster mitigation measures. Of course, we have improved leaps and bounds in India about weather warning systems and also disaster mitigation. We find very less fatalities now uh, due to cyclones as well as due to rainfall, intense rainfall. But this is not enough to cope up with the future rise uh, in these events. So we have to plan in advance. The fourth one is the ocean acidification. The reduction in the pH. This is happening because the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is getting absorbed by seawater. And the seawater becomes more and more carbonic acid. And because of the increase in carbonic acid, then it becomes the pH, it becomes acidified and pH starts reducing. So even reduction of pH by about 0 0.1 unit is going to be a very huge problem for marine organisms, like the shelled organisms, shrimps, for example, the biols, for example, because they develop their skeleton at the larval stage when they are very young, when they are babies. So if there is an increase in acidification, shell formation, calcium formation, will be affected. So the larvae, the babies cannot form shells. Without shells, they cannot become adults. So this is, a, this, is a, this as well as marine organisms are concerned, this is a much more serious problem than warming of the sea. Then there is no immediate solution for, for reduction in pH. And then the cyclones, which, which, I, which I told you. So these are five major issues, temperature, rainfall, sea level rise, ocean acidification, and cyclones. These are going to have impact on the lives, livelihood, and also for the sustenance, sustainability of marine organisms. So what we find is that the, the phytoplankton, which are the microorganisms about which I mentioned in the initial part of my talk, they are going to be affected. They are at the base of the food web. Phytoplankton gives food for all the marine organisms. So they are going to be affected because the radiation budget, as I said, atmospheric radiation budget from the solar radiation budget, that is going to affect photosynthesis of phytoplankton. They need light. So that is going to be affected. We find that some of the mobile species, either due to pollution or due to climate change, may be able to adapt. They may be able to move 
to the area where they are better, where they can be better off, they can live better. But the sedentary or attached organisms like the bivalves, the shelled organisms, which cannot move much, they are vulnerable to pollution. If, there, if you pollute that area, they cannot move anywhere. Fish may move out and go somewhere. Corals cannot move. Bivalves cannot move. Mangroves are plants, they cannot move. So when we talk about uh, pollution and climate change, I would like to have a couple of uh, areas which are uh, we are very much concerned. Uh, one thing is uh, in the East Coast Bay of Bengal. The other one is the luxury islands on the western side of India. Because uh, the rate of increase in seawater temperature and also the increasing intensity of cyclones, uh, it is more uh, along the Bay of Bengal. So what we find is that uh, even the plastic pollution, uh, relatively it is higher in the Bay of Bengal region. And uh, some of the, particularly the Northern Bay of Bengal, where we have the, uh, the Sundarbans, uh, it is a problem of inundation due to sea level rise is very high. So we need to have a separate uh, planning process depending on the areas. Uh, you know, uh, Bay of Bengal uh, in, uh, area, including Andaman, Odisha, and West Bengal, and also Tamil Nadu, they are more prone to cyclones. And also, uh, they, 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 it is impacted more in fatalities also. So there is a definite planning that is required as far as the Bay of Bengal and bordering states are all concerned. Coming to the Lakshadweep Island, uh, it is it's, uh, different from the Indian mainland. It's a narrow strip of coral, 32 islands in the Arabian Sea, uh, of which 11 are inhabited. Uh, the people living there have different type of uh, culture, but the sea is very rich in biodiversity. Uh, and fishing and coconut plantation is the main occupation of the islanders. The major threat to Lakshadweep Islands is sea level rise. Uh, it is very recently estimated that uh, the sea level rise is at the rate of about 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 millimeter every year. Uh, and it is likely to accelerate further in the years to come. And it would have increased by about uh, one meter by the end of uh, this century. Uh, the islands, the mean sea level of the islands uh, is about two to four meters from the sea level. Uh, but uh, one meter rise uh, in the sea level will uh, have many islands, at least partly inundated by the end of the century. There is a greater danger of saltwater intrusion uh, into, the, uh, in, into the islands in the water table, and drinking water availability will be a major threat uh, to, the, to the islands. So it's going to be a lot of problem to the life and properties of the Lakshadweep Islands. Uh, the cyclones are also a major threat to Lakshadweep, as well as the seawater warming. Uh, it will reduce the coral coverage. As I said, the coral reefs are, uh, the coral polyps are very sensitive to temperature and the loss of corals and the loss of coral reef habitat will very drastically affect the fishes and other marine organisms. So what is needed is again, a yeah, very uh, detailed planning. Uh, for example, uh, to, to have adaptation to sea level rise uh, in Lakshadweep, uh, as well as in Andaman and Nicobar Islands also. Andaman and Nicobar Islands, some islands are facing uh, similar uh, problem in the Andaman and Nicobar uh, Islands as well. So whatever planning we are making in both these island groups, 
uh, like uh, the government is planning to have a massive tourism uh, developed in these islands. And particularly if you take Lakshadi, uh, it is very vulnerable because uh, it's a very, they, are, they are very small islands uh, and uh, these islands, uh, the, the, the area of each island is only about something like four square kilometer, uh, not more than seven kilometer length and two kilometer uh, di diameter. So on an average, you can say four to six square kilometer area only is each uh, island. So they are very, very vulnerable. Uh, and the people are also very, very vulnerable. So any uh, development which the government makes in the form of tourism or in the form of uh, bringing industry or industrialized fishing, uh, I think we ha they have to be extremely careful so that uh, the, the basic nature as well as the, uh, the, the ecosystem of uh, coastal Lakshadweep as well as the, the lagoons, the atolls are not affected. That, that, that has to be a very uh, carefully uh, planned uh, in, the, the, in the background of uh, increasing climate change impacts and also these type of industries, tourism and uh, other industrial development also will generate a lot of pollutants. So uh, right now the islands are very pristine. So this has to be uh, maintained and that is very important for the sustainability of Lakshadweep as well as the Andaman Islands. Uh, this is the, I would say the main gist of the ecosystem, marine ecosystem that are impacted by uh, the uh, climate change as well as the pollution. And I would like to say, what is uh, the adaptation uh, options? Mm, it's not very easy as I said earlier, adaptation of, there is no quick fix solution uh, for, for these two. Uh, India has got a lot of policies. Uh, for example, uh, as far as the coastal areas are concerned, we have the integrated coastal zone management. We have the coastal regulation zones. We have the Marine Fishing Regulation Act. We have the fishing policy. Uh, we have the marine protected areas. We have the Biodiversity Act. We have so many of these policies, acts, and uh, also legislatures legislation is in place. But uh, what is required is that how effectively these are implemented. I think that is very important. Whatever policy we have, whatever legislation we have, whatever acts we have, if they are implemented with the full cooperation of the stakeholders, I think this is very important. Not a sort of uh, top-down approach, but all are having equal playground. The, 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 the stakeholders should be equally engaged in policy planning as well as implementation of the policy. It may take time. I agree that it will take time. Maybe top-down, maybe quick. What is happening in some monarchies it may be easy, but in a democratic country, it may be difficult if you want to engage all the stakeholders. Everybody will have their own view. It may be difficult, but at the end of it, there is going to be a very useful thing that will come out. So sort of a co-management approach by engaging all these. So what is first priority, either for overfishing or pollution or uh, let us say climate change adaptation and also mitigation. The engagement of stakeholders are important and putting these regulations and acts at the ground level is very, very important. Start to implement it very effectively. I think, I think that is very, very important. Some of these uh, regulations like the ICSFW or the Biodiversity Act, our Marine Fishing Act, they do not have uh, like the climate change adaptation options ingrained in their acts. 
these are two separate entities. Climate change is uh, dealt with by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, whereas the other one is done by Ministry of Agriculture. So you need to have a proper coordination and also, also mer merging of these documents. Uh, mainstreaming climate change and pollution control in each one of these measures. I think that is that is very, very, very important. Otherwise, they, it goes as a separate uh, parallel railway track. It never meets. So I, th I think that should not be the case. I think coordination with the departments, collaboration with the stakeholders, I think these are two main things that are that are required. And again, as I said earlier, we need to have micro level planning for a global problem. For example, I told the example of uh, Lakshadweep. Lakshadweep is in no way responsible for climate change, but they are affected. So somebody else is responsible. But the people in Lakshadweep are affected. The resources in Lakshadweep are affected. So we have to come to this reality and devise method, adaptation method, specifically for the area. The island it will be different. Mainland it will be uh, it will be different. So it's not that I was talking all catastrophe all the time, but I would like to end up with a positive note that by following issue specific. Uh, measures, I think it is possible even now, not only to arrest the declining trend of contribution of coastal and marine ecosystem services, but also ensure improved and greater contribution in future. For this cooperation of every individual, not only the government, every individual is important. I think we have to have a total revised perspective of our lifestyle. I think that is perspective means in year, year, a thousand years back, humans were not responsible for climate change. They were not uh, doing any plastic pollution, but they were living in caves. We cannot go back to caves and, and live now. So how we are going to overcome this problem? Doing, making some sacrifices and make it more environmental friendly. So every individual has the responsibility and the role in keeping the environment clean and green so that, I and mean, then make it sustainable so that our future generations will be able to sustain. We may not have made a problem. Our grandchildren and great-grandchildren are going to have serious problem. And we have to hand over the earth, at least, at least in the present shape where we are now and not degrade it more and give it to the, our great grandchildren. Thank you very much.